Hey guys, welcome back to Laravel from scratch. In this video, I want to start to create the, the form to actually add, uh, add a post through our application. So if we go to slash posts slash create, that should load the create function inside the post controller. So let's go there. And you can see there's nothing here, so it's just loading a blank page. Uh, what we want to do is load up a view. So we'll say return. And it's going to be in the post folder and then it's going to be in a, um, a template called create. All right. So let's go ahead and save that and we'll go to our views and then post folder. Oops. And let's say new file create dot blade dot PHP. All right. And then I'm just going to copy what we have in the index. And let's see, for the H1, we're just going to say create post. And then we're going to get rid of everything else here. Okay, so let's just save that and make sure that loads up. Uh, what did I what did I do? Return. Oh, I didn't put view. All right. Now for forms, you can use regular HTML. Um, Laravel, I think it was Laravel 4, included a really nice helper uh, for forms. So that has been removed uh, from, I believe, Laravel 5.0 and on. So it's, it's available from Laravel Collective. So that's what we're going to use. Let's go, yeah, Laravel Collective. And then we're going to go to HTML and forms. And then this is going to show us how to install it with Composer. And if we go down here, we can use syntax like this. We can say form open and then the URL that it's going to, going to submit to. And this will just create an opening form tag. This will be the closing form tag. And then we can include certain components. So if we look at uh, right here, we can include labels like this. And then for the inputs, we can do form text and just pass in whatever we want to call that. Um, passwords and check boxes, select groups, all that stuff, anything that you can do with a form. And then it also includes uh, cross site protection. OK, so it's going to include an S uh, CSRF uh, input that's going to protect us from people trying to submit from other places. It's going to make sure that the form submitted from our application. So let's go look up here. Uh, now we're going to use composer. So all we have to do is say composer require and then the package name and then the version. Okay. So let's just copy this and we'll go over here and open up our terminal. Let's clear this out. We'll paste that in and that'll install it. Now we do need to add some things to the config. Usually when you install a pack, a Laravel package, you'll have to add it as a provider. And, and if it has any aliases, you'll have to add those. So let's just copy this one line right here and then go to our config folder in app.php. All right, I'm going to just close this terminal. And this is where the providers are listed. You'll see right here there's an array of providers. We're just going to go right down to the bottom here and paste that in. All right, and then we're going to grab the two aliases, which is form and HTML. So the aliases are right here. We're just going to add it to the bottom here, just like that. And now we should be all set to use it. So let's close up that config file and let's go back to the documentation. And we're just going to grab this right here. And then let's go to our view, which is our create dot blade and paste that in there. Now, instead of using URL here, I mean, you could do that, but we're going to use uh, action. So we're going to put an array and we're going to say action and set that to the controller function, which is going to be post controller. And then we're going to do at store. OK, store is the function we're submitting to. And then we just need to uh, we need to describe the method. And this bracket should go over here. OK, so we'll put a comma here and then the method. Which is going to be post. All right. And we're using bootstrap, so I'm going to put a div in here with the class oops, 
class of form group. And in here, we're going to put our label so we can do our double uh, double curly braces and do form double colon label. And in here, this is going to be a label for title. And then the actual text, which will be title with an uppercase T. And then for the input or the text input, we will we'll do form text. And we're going to pass in the name for this, which will be title. Okay, and then the second parameter is the value. This is going to be a create form, so we don't want a value, so we'll have a, just a blank string. And then we can add attributes inside of this array. So let's say we want to add a class onto this text field. So we can say class, and we want it to be form control, which is a bootstrap class. And then let's also add a placeholder. So placeholder, we'll just say title. And that should give us the, the input. So let's save it and take a look. There we go. Uh, let's see, why is that? Oh, I forgot the T in form control. There we go. All right, so there's our title. And then we want a body. So I'm going to copy the whole form group. And let's change this. And this. And then instead of a text, we want this to be text area. Okay, and we'll change this to body. And the placeholder will say body or body text. Okay, let's check that out. There we go. And we're going to make this into an editor later on, um, but not, not just yet. Now, we're also going to add file uploading, but I'm not going to get into that just yet. We're going to add that later on as well. I, want, I just want to get a basic CRUD application up and running, and then we'll move on to authentication and file uploading and all that stuff. All right, so let's put a submit button. We're going to go right here, and we're going to say form submit. Okay, that's going to be the value, and then we have some attributes we can add. We're going to add class. And let's make that BTN and then BTN primary. Okay, and that should do it. So there's our form. Now when we submit, it's going to make a post request to store. So let's go over here and go to our store. Now validation in Laravel is very, very simple. Um, what we all we have to do is say this validate. And then we can pass in the request that's being passed into the store function and then an array of rules. So we, we want the title to be required. Okay, and that's all we have to do. Also the body. Okay. So now if we go down here and let's just say return one, two, three. So let's go back and we're going to go back to our form and let's submit and you'll see that it's not letting us. If I enter the, the stuff in here and submit, now it does. All right. Now we want some messaging here. And what I'll do is go to our views folder and in the includes, we're going to create a file called messages.blade.php. All right. And then in here, we basically have three things we want to check. We want to check the errors array that's created. Um, when we when we uh, fail validation, uh, we also want to check for session values. So session success and then session error. Um, and those those are going to be flash messages that we can create at any point. So let's say up here if count and we want to look for errors, if that's greater than zero. If that's greater than zero, then we want to loop through, we'll say for each, and then we want to do errors. This is actually an object, so we want to do errors all as error. All right, and then inside here, we're going to put a div with the class of alert and alert danger. 
and we just want to put error. All right, and then below it, we're going to check for session errors. So let's say if session. Actually, we'll do uh, messaging for uh, success messages first. So this will be session success. Uh, and then down here, we're going to end if. And then let's put in a div with the class of alert. And this will be a single message, so we don't have to loop through. So success. All right, and then here we can just say session and then the type, which will be success. All right, we'll get I'll show you how to actually create these messages later. And then this one's just going to check for session error. Okay, we'll change this to danger and then this to, to um, error. All right, and you can use this messages file in all your projects. So we just need to include it in our main layout. So let's go in the container right above the uh, right above the content here. And we're just going to do include. So oh, include and that's going to be in the ink folder and then messages. All right. So let's go ahead and save that and go back and reload and submit. And now we get our error messages. If I put the title in, it's just going to tell us the body. If I put that in, it's going to submit. Okay. And it's as easy as that. It's very, very simple to add validation. You can see validation, pagination. This stuff is really easy with Laravel. It's very elegant. So let's go back to our post controller and finish our store function. Now, remember we used Tinker and we inserted our stuff into the database. We can do the same exact thing here. All right. So let's say create post. And this is going to be post equals new post. Okay, and we the reason that we can use this is because we brought it in up here. Okay, just like we used it here in the index and everywhere else we used it. Okay, so new post, and then we want to add our field. So we'll say post title, set that to, uh, we're going to set it to request, and then input, and then title. All right, this will get whatever is submitted into the form. We want to do the same thing for the body. Okay, so this will be post body. Set this right here to body as well. Okay, and then we want to save it. So we'll just say post save. And then we'll just redirect. So to redirect, we can just say return redirect. Very simple. And we want to go to slash posts. And then let's set a message with this, a success message. So all we have to do is say with and success and then post created. OK, remember we created that messages file. This is where we can actually set the message. So let's save it. And we should now be able to submit a post. So let's go to post slash create and let's do post three. We'll just say this is post three submit and there we go. We get a post created message and it gets added. Um, now, why is it in the middle? Let's go up to our index here. Uh, oh, we ordered it by title, so I actually don't want that. What I want to do is order it. Uh, we want to order it by created at. All right, good. So let's put a link to add a post in our nav bar. So we'll go over to includes nav bar and I want to put this on the other side on the right. So under this UL, let's put a UL and we'll give it a class of nav uh, nav bar dash nav and then nav bar dash right. Okay, and then we'll put in an li. Okay, and this is going to say add, or let's say create post, and that's going to go to slash posts uh, slash create. 
Okay, so now we have a link to create our post. So I guess we'll go ahead and implement the editor. I wasn't going to yet, but we will. So let's say uh, Laravel, I think it's, shoot, what is it? Laravel dash CK editor. Right here, Unisharp Laravel CK editor. Uh, so we need to install this with Composer. So let's grab this right here. And we'll go over and open up our terminal. Let's clear this out. Paste that in, run it. Okay, we'll also have to add uh, to the app PHP file. We need to add a provider, just like we did with the other package, the Laravel Collective. So let's go to app.php, which is in the config folder. Let's, just, uh, let's close this up. I'll just make it smaller. So we want to add it to the providers, which is right here, providers array. And we're going to just paste that in, save it. And we need to also publish our resources. So we do that with this command here, which is an artisan command. OK, so let's see, did this finish? OK, so now let's clear that and let's paste that in. That'll publish the assets and then the usage. What we want to do is in our layout. I'm going to take this right here. We're going to do it this way. Uh, oh, no, we're not. We're going to do it this way. You can use jQuery if you want. So let's copy this and we're going to put this in into the uh, layout file. I'm just going to close these up to avoid confusion. All right, so our layout file, which is in views, layouts, app.blade, and we're going to put this, let's put it right above the ending body tag. All right, and what basically all we have to do now is give our text areas that we want to use the editor, we want to add this article CK editor ID. So let's save that and then go back to our in uh, create where we have a text area. And to add an ID, we can just add into this array right here. So let's do ID. And we're going to set that to article dash CK editor. Save that. And let's go back. And now we have an editor. It's as easy as that. So if I create another post, let's say post for and we'll say this is post four and let's make four bold. OK, now this is going to get saved as HTML. If we look at the source code, you'll see there's HTML tags. So let's submit. All right. And then if we look at post four, you'll see it's not parsing the HTML. So the reason for that is when you just use if we go to our show template, which is what we're looking at, if we're just using these double curly braces, it's not going to parse the HTML. So with the body, what we want to do is use one curly brace and then two exclamation marks, and that'll actually parse the HTML. So let's save that and we'll go back and reload. And now you can see that it's actually parsing it. There's no paragraph tags showing and we have our bold text. All right, so it's as easy as that to implement an editor. So in the next video, what I want to do is make it so that we can edit and delete our posts.